All over America and in Europe, millions of people ride wooden roller coasters each year for the thrills and chills they give them. In less than two and a half minutes, and at speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour, riders are taken as far as 160 feet into the air, dropped almost to the ground, speed through hair-raising curves, and into a final straightaway that lets them catch their breath. Yet despite this feeling of danger, there is none. In perfect safety, millions enjoy what has become a national pastime for over 90 years. How are these intricate wooden structures resembling works of ascending art designed and constructed? How do these millions of riders enjoy the safety, yet have their wits scared out of them? One firm located in the Cincinnati, Ohio suburb of Madeira has the answers. Curtis D. Summers Incorporated is the world's premier designer of wooden roller coasters. The certificates of engineering licenses give claim to the king of the wooden roller coasters. Kurt Summers presently holds engineering certificates in 41 states and in several countries in the world. He is the most highly acclaimed wooden roller coaster creator ever. Summers has acquired over the years a staff of 18 of the most brilliant coaster designers and engineers. These staffers are responsible for designing over 30 wooden coasters, ranging from world record holders to relatively smaller ones geared for young children. Since 1988, over 15 woodies have been designed and constructed, representing a total investment of approximately $40 million. Amusement park owners have learned that the public hungers for thrills, and there is nothing more thrilling than a ride on a woody. No two are precisely alike. Each design is based on good, sound engineering disciplines with the safety of the riders foremost. A wooden roller coaster begins with the needs of the amusement park owner. There can be a number of variations. One of these requisites is the amount of land available. In most cases, the site is selected by the amusement park, five to seven acres being the usual requirement. In addition, the soil must be tested to determine how it can support the concrete piers on which the coaster will rest. These piers, usually 18 inches in diameter and drilled to a depth of five feet, are placed about nine feet apart and must support as much as 7,000 pounds as the train carrying the riders crosses it. Equally important is the amount of stress wind can put on a woody. Since coasters like the one located at Cedar Point, Ohio, rise to over 160 feet, wind shifts can be detrimental to the safety and ride of the coaster. Here at Summers Engineering, every possible wind condition is programmed into the CAD computer. There is no average norm in building roller coasters since parks are located in different climates and variations can be major. If the coaster is to be constructed in an area prone to hurricanes, then the design may use wind velocities as high as 130 miles per hour, as compared with some inland areas where the velocity may be only 80 miles per hour. If the amusement park owner wants the coaster to cross a lake or run beside one, then local information on floodplains must be examined. Frost depth must also be checked so that freezing soil will not heave the concrete piers. In the south, this is nearly zero. In Minnesota, it is five feet. Once all these factors have been determined, then the features to highlight the coaster are chosen. The amusement park owner outlines what he wants, and the designer must determine if they are feasible. There is always one basic feature, a lift, that takes the trains to the top of an incline where the cars are released to drop down an opposing incline with an angle of 45 to 55 degrees from the horizontal. Then freewheel without additional power throughout the rest of the ride. Other features can include curbs with 60 degree banks or more a helix of 360 degrees, and sometimes a double helix of 720 degrees. 
Straight and vertical runs are included, and several coasters have turns that go through the structure. Both centrifugal force and gravity must be taken into account. No more than 3.5 Gs is permissible, and not less than two-tenths of a G. Within this range, the coaster will continue on its track without injuring passengers, and still provide a safe ride. The ride must be smooth, without jerking, in going from one feature to another, such as straight run to curve, and vice versa. The trains that ride the tracks of the coaster are composed of six or seven small railroad type cars, each holding four passengers, two abreast. Each passenger is held in by a lap bar that is locked down throughout the ride. But before anyone rides a new coaster, it is thoroughly tested. Weights are simulated for riders. G-forces are scientifically studied. Nothing is left to chance. Safety is the main goal of designing a coaster. With complete safety, the rider will have confidence in the ride and be thrilled, not frightened. On large coasters, three trains may be running the track at the same time. Because of this, cars are equipped with sensors, and as they pass electronic checkpoints, interlock brakes and accelerators can be energized to slow or speed the cars. Each axle of each car has three wheels, one for the track, one to control lateral movement, and one to control vertical movement. These wheels prevent the cars from leaving the track. The track gauge is 37 inches wide, and the running track is covered with 3 8 inch steel plate for maximum friction reduction. It is this steel running surface that produces the characteristic clacking sound of a wooden roller coaster. The sound of the chain engaging the cogs. The clatter of the cars rolling across the rails. These sounds getting louder and softer, with the cars cascading up and down across a few acres, make up some of the nostalgia of the wooden. The sound, the ride, and the thrills you never forget. The Woody. <laughs>